An organization earns its values from its members only. It seems like European Union realized this fact just now. With every other kind of crisis knocking on its doors, from fear of being fragmented to people's eroding trust in it, the EU has finally decided to be humble. But humble to whom? To all the small nations it has been ignoring till now. Stands tall on that list of sideline nations are the Balkans. But you know what they say. What's done is done. What's gone is gone. Hello and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Vedika. Let's begin. European Union has been a powerful organization since its birth in 1993. With nations like Germany, France and Italy, the Union has always seen itself as the savior of the European continent. Many nations joined it soon after to get into its protective shade, but many struggled hard to be a part of it. For instance, North Macedonia, Montenegro and Serbia all waited for years and years. Their progress sometimes got held up by objections from even single EU countries. Though they are placed on the consideration list, they didn't get any true attention from the EU till now. Philosophers weren't playing when they said it's better to be humble and happy than to be arrogant and lonely. The union leaders might be rubbing their heads now after this reality is hitting them hard. Just as the Russian-Ukraine conflict started, everything changed in the Western world. After staying seven days in Whitey jail, we are back. We don't know if they'll allow us to stay peacefully. We don't know when the next ban will be announced. And that's why you must download the TFI app. Apple users can simply go to the App Store, search for TFI Global and install the app. And since Google Play has banned us, Android users can download the app from the link in the description. We are in for a long haul and only your support can help us fight this war. The superpowers are crawling on all fours to get away out of this misery they embarked upon thoughtlessly and selfishly. After Europe sanctioned Russian energy imports, doom fell on the whole continent. With time, the leaders are realizing that it is better to have more and more members in the bloc so they can support one another in times of crisis. Consequently, statements of enlargements of the EU started brewing and it is in no time that they occupied headlines for all newspapers. Olive Scholz, the German Chancellor, turned heads when he announced recently his will to extend EU membership, especially towards the East. He said, a united European Union of 27, 30, 36 states with then more than 500 million free and equal citizens can bring its way to bear even more strongly in this world. He further added that EU growing eastward is a win-win for all of us. He even stressed military autonomy and majority decision. Surprising, isn't it? Especially coming from the leaders of a hybridistic organization. Fascinating is the fact that the organization last expanded in 2013 when it accepted Croatia who applied for membership in 2003. But interestingly, not only the German Chancellor, but the EU itself in its annual enlargement report showed signs of complete U-turns from its previous rigid stance on granting memberships, especially to Balkan nations. EU Enlargement Commissioner Oliver Valhey told that the executive recommends a grant of candidate status to Bosnia. Curious is the fact that the nation still doesn't fully comply with the EU's so-called standards that are needed for membership. Not just Bosnia. The EU is opening its arms to Serbia as well. Serbia, the one country that tried for decades to be part of the holy bloc. There is no doubt Serbians must have gone in total shock when they heard the news. Ironically, when the EU is coming to all the Balkan nations, praying to them to become a member of the Union whose luster is waning. The Balkans are in no mood to breathe life into EU's dying body. Serbia is coming out as a torchbearer of the Balkans and giving EU the taste of its own medicine. Serbian Interior Minister Alexander Vilen stated that Serbia should accept that the EU doesn't want it and that it has no place in the EU. He pointed out that the EU is just blackmailing the nation into fulfilling its own diktats. He said that EU can't force them to sanction Russia, recognize Kosovo and abolish Republika Srpska for membership. He added that states have a memory, pointing towards the 2015 UNSC resolution against Serbia, which Russia vetoed. 
He said Serbia can never forget how Russia prevented the EU from declaring Belgrade guilty of genocide. Interestingly, Serbians as well do not want to be a part of the EU anymore. In a poll conducted in April itself, the number of Serbians who are against joining the European Union got higher than those who want to become a member. The poll, which was conducted by Ipsos, revealed that 44% of participants are against membership while 35% are in favour. We should keep in mind that this was back in April when the Ukrainian conflict just started. One can clearly make out what will be the people's response if a poll gets conducted recently. Well, it is a no-shocker that the Balkans are no more attracted to EU. No nation in its right mind will join EU today when it is failing on every front to protect its members and to stand against the dictatorship of the US. The war showed all the loopholes the Union has and how all the members are just sucking benefits from each other without caring about its citizens. With the rise of the individual identity of every nation and with the coming of conservatives in power who are titled towards history and culture, EU's dream to get success by walking all over the smaller nations will never get fulfilled.